Hey everybody, JB back with you once again, and welcome to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. Mr. Falls, I... Oh God. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Alright, uh, can we get past the image of him chewing on this? <laughs> so I can do the recap, I don't want this to be in the video too long. I want to say thanks, you're real good, you really hooked me up. Um... So yeah, last video, we started off another flashback case where we got to look at Mia Fey's very first trial in court. Uh, we were teased some details about this in the very first case of the game, which was her second trial. But here we got to see it up close and personal. And uh, there were some rather familiar faces that popped up. Uh, the first notable one, uh, and I didn't really talk about this at the time, mainly because I wanted to let it sink in for everybody, was a man named Diego Armando another attorney at the Grossberg Law Firm, who looked rather familiar, and uh, he definitely had a very familiar coffee drinking habit. It seems like Mia and Diego um, got to know each other through this case, which is rather interesting. Uh, but what happens to him after this, we don't really know. Uh, the other thing that was rather fascinating was that there's a witness in this case who seems to be involved in everything, uh, and her name is Melissa Foster, or that's what she claims it is at the very least. We later found out, uh, or earlier found out, later in the chronology, that uh, her name was Dahlia Hawthorne. Um, and we even got a reference here in our court record to somebody named Dahlia, which was this note here, that apparently somebody named Valerie Hawthorne, the uh, victim in this case, wrote out. So what exactly is going on with her? Well, we need to figure that out if we're going to actually do well here. Oh, and uh, lest we forget, the other familiar face was Miles Edgeworth. This was his first case as a prosecutor, which is rather interesting. So let's see how the rest of this goes. Thanks! We're almost there. Once I prove that she committed the crime... Yeah, but there's one more big obstacle we've got to get past. A obstacle? Yeah, motive. Why would Melissa Foster kill a policewoman anyway? Motive, huh? Anyway, we're still badly in need of information. Information? Right. What we need the most is info about this Melissa Foster herself. All we know is that she's a student studying literature. And one more thing. What is it? Well, the incident that happened five years ago, of course. The kidnapping murder case that Zebra Boy is on death row for. I didn't do nothing. I didn't kill nobody. I never lie. Mr. Falls, in that case, tell us more about it. About what happened five years ago. Okay, I trust you. Ooh, that's a different face portrait for him. That day, five years ago, I dream of it every day. This picture, it reminds me of everything. Bridge looks same, just like then, five years ago. Well, if that's the case, then that would contradict what uh, Melissa... Was it Melissa that said that the bridge recently was broken? Um, and that the map was inaccurate? Oh, no, it was Edgeworth. It was Edgeworth that said that. Like it could fall apart. Fall apart any minute. So it's been broken like that for at least five years. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Although it's interesting, the broken part is above land, not the water. I don't know if that's actually relevant or not, but... Ha! Sorry, buddy, but you sound like the one that could fall apart at any minute. Ain't true. I did. I did kidnap her. Five years ago, I kidnapped my girlfriend, Dahlia Hawthorne. Your girlfriend? Huh? Hey, hold on there. Did you say Hawthorne? The victim's last name. Yeah. That seems rather too important to be a uh, coincidence. Dahlia Hawthorne, Valerie's little sister. Whoa, whoa, what? Are you serious? Also, this would have been great information to have earlier. You're on death row, man. The girl. Let her go. Yeah, we can see the bridge is broken even there. Shut up. 
come closer and I kill her. I guess that's Terry talking. Sorry, but you're not going to get the chance. Ooh, we didn't see that shot before. The detective back then was Valerie Hawthorne. At first I thought shooting someone for kidnapping was crossing the line, but if it was to protect her little sister, I can understand why she did it. Wrong. No protect sister. Valerie, betray me. Betray us. What do you mean she betrayed you? Everything. All lies. All make-believe. Kidnapping, too. A make-believe kidnapping? Well, we've heard stranger on these cases. Dahlia, my girlfriend. My love. My teen angel. Ugh, did he actually say my teen angel? He's seen one too many soap operas. Also, wait, how old are you? You're 25. Like, you would have been 20 back then. Oh, I really hope she's at least of age, because that's really creepy. I do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. Anything Dahlia says? Hold on a minute. Well, if the uh, other case that we've seen her in is anything to go by, she certainly seems to have uh, a lot of influence over people. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie, too. Valerie was in on it? Dahlia's family rich. Jewelry business. We got... We get one jewel. That's what we thought. Me and Dahlia wrote kidnap note. We send her dad. Uh, the game is like frozen for some reason. Uh, there we go. I just had to press the enter key again. I asked for two million dollar diamond. Tell him make exchange on Dusky Bridge. We tell him Valerie make transfer because she knew detective. Having a police detective in your pocket is a useful thing, all right. In the end, you were planning on splitting the two million three ways, huh? Yeah, but that woman. Which one? That woman, Valerie. She do it for real. She shoot at me for real. Me and Dahlia. I was shot in arm, Dahlia. She jumping river. Jump? You don't mean she jumped on purpose, do you? I couldn't do it. I can never push her. Anyway, I blacked out. Wake up with police all over. And that's when they decided to give you the death sentence. I couldn't believe it. That woman, she betrayed me. That man, Terry Falls, he killed her. He threw her off the bridge. He threw my beloved sister into the roaring river 40 feet below. These five years, all I wonder is, why? 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 Why is she lying? That's all I want to know. So that's why you called her. You wanted to hear the truth from Valerie herself. Yes, but I forget what she looked like, so I tell her to wear a scarf. I don't want to hurt her. Just ask why. Why? Why do you lie? Why do you betray me? I just want to hear answer come from her mouth. That's all. So that's why. That's why you made a crazy escape like that. Just one thing, zebra boy. My senses are tingling all over. Tell me, Mr. Falls. Where is it? Huh? Where's what? Come on now, kitten. The ransom. The two million dollar diamond. Remember that now? Did you give it back to Pops? Did the police take it? I don't know. Huh? You don't know? No, really. I don't know. It's gone. With Dahlia. With Dahlia? That day, on the bridge, Dahlia put it in backpack. Did she jump with that on? Now gone with Dahlia. Gone forever. 
Watkins Eagle River. Yes, she did. It disappeared with Dahlia, huh? Wait a minute. You can come back in now. We're about ready to go. Mr. Falls, just one more question. When you said, with Dahlia, do you mean the diamond is still missing? Along with the body of Dahlia Hawthorne? Mmm, I think I can see the pieces coming together. Never found her. My sweet Dahlia. So wait, if Melissa Foster is Dahlia Hawthorne, then... Wouldn't he recognize her? They never found her. Swallowed by a river. Gone. Dahlia. My teen angel. Your teen angel. How old was she anyway? Just 14. Okay, that's really creepy. Like, you're a 20-year-old adult and you're dating a 14-year-old? 14? I guess you were robbing cradles before diamonds. Yeah, no kidding. She plans a fake kidnapping and disappears into the river with a rock worth two mil. Man oh man, angels these days. Hmm. Falls takes the fall and gets a one-way ticket to death row. Something tells me that this guy was set up as the fall guy, which might be the intended pun here. Is Dahlia Hawthorne an angel or is she really a... Uh... I think she's more like a... Uh... It's time, kitten. It looks like we have a few more aces up our sleeve now. You bet! Diamond added to the core record. A $2 million gem used as ransom for Dahlia. Lost to Eagle River five years ago. The training wheels come off now, Mia. You've got to strike while the iron is hot. That's one of my rules. Remember it. Alright. Here we go. Back into the trenches here. Now then, let's continue with the trial of Mr. Terry Falls. With us? Are you feeling better? Yes, Your Honor. I'll try my best. Hmm, you're a brave young lady. Not this again. I can understand a defense lawyer wanting to get her quiet off the hook. However, to try to pin the crime on an innocent student is... What are you talking about? My witness is not the person on trial here. She's an innocent bystander who witnessed a violent crime. That's all. What possible reason would a girl like this have for murdering a policewoman? Hmm, it's certainly hard to imagine this woman as a murderer. Her motive, huh? I figure that's what I had to establish next. Well, Miss Fay, do you have any evidence of a motive? Er, yes, of course. I think. Ha, you're still acting as tame as a kitten. Kitten. Mr. Armando, listen. A lawyer is someone who smiles, no matter how bad it gets. Smiling on the outside, while your guts are twisted in knots, is the mark of a pro. Maybe so, but I wish you would quit grinning at me like that. Um, excuse me, may I speak, Mr. Judge? Of course! Mr. Judge is ready any time you like! I'd like... I'd like to say something. Some people here are suspicious of me, right? That's why... I... I at least wanted you, Mr. Judge, to know that it's not true. Hmm, I see. You're such an honest and upstanding young lady. It looks like this witness is a real professional. What do you mean? Look at that 100 watt smile. Just when things are darkest for her, click. She lights right up. Very well then, let's hear what the witness has to say. Oh boy. Melissa Foster's history. I... I was out of the country until the year before last. Until I entered college, I had never even been to Eagle Mountain before. And I certainly don't have any reason for wanting to hurt a police officer. Holding a grudge and killing the officer who testified against you five years ago. Or kidnapping a poor girl. I just think the defendant is a terrible, horrible monster. Out of the country, eh? Precisely. Furthermore, she has no possible motive for committing murder. Hmm, indeed. You're up to bat, kitten. 
Sharpen those claws and put on your best smile. You bet. Somehow I have to tie her to this case. Okay, so we were trying to establish that she was involved five years ago. Um... Oh man, we don't have any health left. I'm probably going to have to reference the answers for this. Um, I'll try to do my best to, to guess things before I look things up. So, let's see if we can figure out some things that do tie her to the case five years ago. We know that this is um, a reference to Dahlia. And we as the audience know that she is actually Dahlia. But Mia doesn't really know that for sure at this point. Um... Hmm. What do we have here? Okay, here we go. So, Dahlia Hawthorne is um, listed as deceased. Alright. I'm going to um, start pressing here. So, what country were you living in, then? We were all living abroad, but after my parents were killed, it was a brutal civil war. She had to try to make her way back home alone. I lost everything. I didn't even have any personal identification. Well, that's convenient. What kind of sob story is this? What do I do? Should I press her for details? Yes, I would think so. Witness, answer my question. I'll even repeat it for you. What country were you in? Objection. Your Honor, this line of questioning is childish. What country she was in, and how many languages she may speak, are irrelevant here. What we're here to evaluate is whether this witness has any connection to this case. I've lived abroad ever since I was a little girl. That's why I could never have known Mr. Falls or Detective Hawthorne. Yes, I think we've established that point. Yes, indeed. Well then, shall we add what you just stated to the official testimony? Yes, please, Mr. Judge. Naturally, I didn't know either the victim or the defendant. Okay. That seems like something we could contradict. I don't know if we have enough here. I'm just trying to figure out something that ties Dahlia to everything here. But the thing is that this note, like using it, is predicated on the notion that she is Dahlia, and we haven't really established that yet. Um, see, if she was like wearing the diamond ring or something, like that would be kind of interesting, but I'm just going to continue pressing for now. You didn't know either person? Are you certain of that? Yes, I'm afraid I'm rather shy around people. Hmm, oh well, that can't be helped. Why is he just agreeing with everything that comes out of her mouth? The first time you saw either of them was when they were on the bridge, correct? Yes, it really was a coincidence. Okay. We have here. So what made you decide to go to Eagle Mountain anyway? I just love being outdoors. Picnics, hiking, you know, that sort of thing. You don't look like much of a hiker to me, but you do look like a digger of sorts. But Eagle Mountain is a two-hour drive from here and no trains run through there. There are plenty of mountains that are closer and easier to get to. Well, I went there once with the college hiking club. I fell in love with its stark, desolate beauty and its cold yet romantic gloominess. Didn't know you were such a goth. By the way, what's the name of your college? The prosecution objects to any questions that involve the witness's private life. All that matters is that she is a material witness to a crime. The witness doesn't need to respond to questions that are clearly malicious and intent. Thank you. She's really gone too far. Hmm, Miss Fay, you're threading on, treading on thin ice here. I hardly said anything. Talk about sensitive. Perhaps, but your behavior that day was very suspicious. Not only have you contradicted yourself here in court, but you know things you shouldn't. For example, the scratches on the trunk of the car. Well, that's... Oh, he interrupted her. Unfortunately, Miss Fay, your last statement proves nothing. Oh, really? And why is that? 
The witness came to the police station once to identify the suspect. It's entirely possible that, at that time, an officer showed her this photo. Hmm, that seems like a rather serious mistake. Ha, that's the oldest trick in the prosecutor's book. That's not fair. That wicked inmate. I'll never be able to forget that horrible day. A grudge? Well, the policewoman's testimony was crucial, wasn't it? Crucial in getting the defendant sentenced to death. Yes, and that's precisely why he harbored such deep anger against her. So much anger that he forgot his own guilt. I feel like that's not the way it works. My client has always maintained that he's innocent of those charges. He seems rather forgetful. Your client, I mean. Not only did he forget about what he did, but he forgot the poor policewoman as well. What do you mean by that? Your client. He forgot what the detective looked like, right? It's too bad for her that he didn't forget about her testimony as well. Well, she's right about that. Mr. Falls is kind of forgetful. Let's press even harder. You said he forgot what the detective looked like. What did you mean by that? Well, he couldn't tell who she was without some kind of identification, right? Quite right. That's why the victim was wearing a scarf as identification. Why, if I had been wearing a white scarf that day, then he probably would have tried to kill me. Hmm, that's true. He's clearly a bitter man. This is bad. Mr. Fall's reputation just keeps getting worse and worse. Sometimes it's best not to poke too deep. What should I do with that last statement? Uh, let's have it added to the testimony. Your Honor, what the witness just said now was tremendously important. I'd like it added to the official testimony. The prosecution has no objection. After all, the defendant is a killer and a mentally unbalanced one at that. That testimony only hopes to further helps to further prove that point. Hmm. No, that's not why I... Enough, witness, if you would. My pleasure, Mr. Judge. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. What do you mean by lucky? Well, it's February now. Everyone is wearing scarves. If I had accidentally worn a white scarf like he said, then you yourself might have been killed. Oh, wait a second. But we are trying to establish that she was indeed the one wearing the white scarf, right? Because aren't we going with the idea that um, Valerie was killed off screen and she was dressing up as Valerie to meet Terry and then take the photo with the timer function? Hmm, that would have been a terrible loss for this world. Ha, it looks like you pressed too hard this time, kitten. Mr. Armando, keep looking around you and you're going to lose sight of the finish line. Justice is blind, but she's not deaf. Sometimes you have to know when not to talk. You knew about that incident, but weren't you out of the country until a year before last? Well, I saw a report about the escaped convict on the news. They had an in-depth report about his whole history. So you were still living abroad five years ago, is that right? And you happened to catch that on news for this part of the world? Yes. I can't let her get away with these lies. Listen to me, she's neck deep in this whole thing. Somehow you're just going to have to get her to show the court her true self. Indeed. Alright, so that's all the, the statements we can press. I don't know if we can press another one of these um, here, but I think the key to this is that we're trying to um, presume here that she is the one wearing the uh, scarf. But I don't know, like, where the the proof is for that. Like, none of these things are really proof that she did that. Hmm. I feel like the scarf is the, the thing that we need to do. And I think we need to present it here. I'm going to look that up and see if that's correct. Let's see if how right we are about that. Like, that's the closest thing I can think of. Alright, so... Okay, yes, we do need to present the scarf here. Yay! Okay, that is good. Objection. 
There we go. Witness, I want you to look at this photo you took. It's hard to see in the photo, but look at the scarf the victim wore as identification. Ah, oh, you're talking about the scarf right here, eh? Yes, that's it. The scarf the police woman was wearing. I've got her now. Just don't mess up. But that's strange. In your testimony, you stated the following. I guess I'm lucky I wasn't wearing a white scarf. White? This is the scarf you identified as belonging to the victim. But it certainly doesn't look white to me. Oh. I thought it was just dirty. Like, I just assumed that it was a white scarf that had kind of gotten dirty a bit there. Well, it was foggy that day, and it was raining as well. It's not surprising that she mistook it for white. Uh, I think there's something more to it than that. Sorry, but not this time. The witness just confirmed that this was the victim's scarf. Yes, but what's the significance? It's true that the scarf doesn't look white, but... There's only one explanation for this mix-up. The reason why the witness thought the scarf was white is... I'm gonna say it's th this note. So let's see if that's correct. Yes, it is. Okay. Witness, have you ever seen this note? Note? I... No, never. It's top secret evidence. There's no reason that you would've. Oh, I think she did. Hmm, I wonder about that. What do you mean? This note shows Mr. Falls' instructions to the victim regarding their meeting. It says, wear white scarf for identification. White scarf? Ah! Witness, you knew what this note said. And it's because you knew that you slipped up and mistakenly said white scarf. Uh, uh, er... Well, Miss Foster? No! Order! 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 Mr. Edgeworth, I'm waiting for an explanation! I'm quite sure this note wasn't leaked to the public. And yet, this witness knew exactly what the note said. At the time of the murder, the number of people that knew were quite limited. Terry Falls is one. The person who wrote the note, Valerie Hawthorne, is another. And finally, one more person. Mmm. Did you say one more person? That's right. A person that no one would have suspected. Have you figured it out, kitten? Yup. The third person that knew the contents of the note was... Alright, I don't even have to check the answers for this. And that person is... Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? I've never heard that name before. Look at the victim's note. This is what it says. Talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time uh, there is her name right there. What's this? So who is this person? This Dahlia Hawthorne? <sighs> Miss Faye must be desperate if she's trying to bring the dead back to life. The dead? Dahlia Hawthorne was the victim's deceased younger sister. She was killed in a crime five years ago. Killed in a crime? You don't mean... Yes, she was kidnapped and killed by Terry Falls. You said she was killed, but was she really? What are you implying? Of course, people thought she had died five years ago when she fell off of Dusky Bridge and was lost in the Eagle River. However, her corpse was never found. She was declared legally dead five years ago. As far as the law is concerned, Dahlia Hawthorne is officially dead. Don't tell me that this is one of those, like, statute of limitations things, like where if five years have expired, then something can happen now. But the fact remains that her body was never recovered. Dahlia Hawthorne was 14 years old five years ago. If she were still alive, she would be 19 now. Melissa Foster. I believe that's the same age you are. Ah. Even you couldn't. Miss Fay, you're not saying... 
But I am. That's precisely what I'm saying. This witness before us is the girl that was kidnapped and killed five years ago. This girl is in fact Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. What? What? Ha! Nice work. That was like tossing a grenade into a three alarm fire. But unless you can tie all the loose ends together, you're nothing but a hidden run arsonist. I... I understand. If I can expose your true nature, I can turn this whole case on its head. Now's my chance to make Mr. Edgeworth squirm. Hmm. 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 Witness, just who are you anyway? I, I, I'm... I didn't think you'd come to this. That's enough. You don't have to say any more, Witness. Yes, I understand. What? Mr. Edgeworth, explain yourself. Your Honor, I have an admission to make. I honestly never thought the defense would pursue the matter this far. You don't... you don't mean... Oh, did he know? Yes, the prosecutor's office isn't filled with fools, you know. Naturally, we conduct full background checks on all of our witnesses. What did he say? Ha, it looks like the kid knew. He knew her true identity from the get-go. No way! But then why... If you hadn't revealed her secret, he wasn't going to say anything about it. All he wanted was her testimony, so he made a little trade. Let me introduce you to... The victim's younger sister, Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. But, but, I thought she died five years ago. We thought so as well. But, well, as you can see... Why? Why did she hide her identity for five years? That has nothing to do with the current case. She was merely an accidental witness to a crime. Uh, I don't think so. Accidental? I don't believe that for a minute. For the last five years, she's been playing the role of victim. And now we find her acting suspiciously at the scene of another murder. Really, Miss Faye, I must say, your strategy here is painfully obvious. You're trying to pin your client's crime on an innocent witness in order to win. At any cost. How dare you? Please let us take a moment to think. Five years ago, this girl was kidnapped and nearly killed. Hmm. But even worse than that, five years later, Dahlia Hawthorne lost something much more precious, her big sister. And I feel like I'm looking at the person who did it, aren't I? Miss Faye must be insane to even suggest that she murdered her. What? I'm inclined to agree with the prosecutor's logic. I think she had a pretty good motive for murdering her, though. I mean, if she had the truth come out, as the note said, then everything that happened five years ago would be exposed. And I don't think she could have that. Miss Fay, do you have any evidence to back up your assertion? What possible reason would this witness have for killing her beloved sister? Well, you see, I thought I was winning, but somehow he's turned it around on me. Huh. I think you need a little push in the right direction, kitten. The defense is prepared to present evidence supporting our claim. Oh, did Diego say that? Ah, that wasn't me. That was this guy. This crazy coffee addict. I think we've heard enough empty threats from you, old man. Ha. What makes you think they're empty, boy? Also, old man. Hang on a sec. He's 27! Okay. Maybe seven years feels like a lot to 20-year-old Edgeworth. Because your protege looks like she's sweating bullets. Ah, I am sweating bullets. You think you're in a tough spot, huh? Of course, aren't I? No. You've just arrived at the moment of truth, that's all. Whether you win or lose, that's up to you. Up to me? Ah, the rashness of youth. How charming. You're one to talk, Edgeworth. This coming from someone younger than me. Yeah, exactly. Now then, let's not waste any more time. Miss Fay. What motive would this witness have for murdering her own sister, Valerie Hawthorne? 
All right, I think it's this thing, but let's see here. And yes, it is. I'm, not, I'm doing a little better today, but unfortunately we can't uh, be as careless with guessing. The story starts after Terry Falls escaped. He called Valerie and told her he wanted to meet. This is the note she left. It says, talk to Dahlia. Tell her this time the whole truth must come out. Valerie Hawthorne gave Dahlia a warning. She told her she was going to reveal to the world the whole truth. The whole truth? There was a dangerously important secret between Valerie and Dahlia. That's the reason Dahlia felt she had to kill Valerie. To keep her mouth shut permanently. A terrific story, Miss Fay. If you like fiction, that is. Enlighten the court, Miss Fay. What was the secret that was so important? Where's your evidence? Dolly and Valerie Hawthorne and Terry Falls. There's only one important secret that connects them all. <coughs> mm, excuse me. Oh yes, I know this secret. Your Honor, the defense would like to request further testimony. What testimony? Regarding the kidnapping five years ago, we believe it will explain a lot of things such as the nature of the important secret between the Hawthorne sisters. Ugh. Very well. I'll grant your request for further testimony. I know it will be painful for you, but can you enlighten us once more, my little maple leaf? Ugh. That's just wrong. Yes, I'll try, Mr. Judge. Putting on the old charm one more time, Dahlia? But this will be the last time you hide behind your womanly wiles. I wish I could say that was true. Five years ago. Five years ago, I was kidnapped by Mr. Falls. The ransom price was a raw diamond. My sister Valerie brought it to the bridge. After she made the exchange, she shot Mr. Falls in the arm. That's when Mr. Falls tried to kill me by shoving me off the bridge from behind. I survived, but I was afraid I might be kidnapped again for my family's money. So I decided to change my identity and start a new life. Hmm. The kidnapping left her emotionally scarred. With her sister's help, she left the Hawthorne family and started all over again. And we're to believe after all that she murdered her sister? Preposterous. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Miss Fay? Yes, Your Honor. As you've heard, the witness is still traumatized from the kidnapping. I'll ask you again to be extremely gentle in your cross-examination. Mr. Edgeworth got the jump on me again. Ha. If we're not allowed to fight, then let's twist some arms. Listen up. we still got that info. That ace up our sleeve. What info? Come on, kitten. Don't say you've forgotten already. The fact that the kidnapping five years ago was staged. Indeed we do. That's right, it was a fake kidnapping. Terry Falls told us that in the lobby. I do anything she says. Anything Dahlia says. What you're saying is that the kidnapping five years ago was planned by... Yeah, me and Dahlia. And Valerie, too. Yes, that's it. The fake kidnapping is your best shot, Mia. That's her secret. Alright. Um, does the diamond entry in the court record actually say that? Let me just check that. Um, use this rent. It doesn't really say that. So in that case, I'm inclined to think that we need to just press everything here. Did you and Mr. Falls have a relationship? Yes, as a tutor. You were tutoring him? Mr. Falls? No, of course not. Don't be ridiculous. Mr. Falls came to the house to tutor me. That makes sense. Five years ago, she was only 14. He probably came up with a kidnapping plan during that time. The Hawthorns are in the jewelry trade and quite wealthy, you see. Hmm, quite a clever fellow, that Mr. Falls. Did I hear him right? Did he just call Mr. Falls a clever fellow? I heard the diamond is valued in the neighborhood of two million dollars. Two million dollars? It was still uncut, so it was about the size of a pint of milk. Hmm. A two million dollar pint of milk? 
I don't know what to think about that. Uh, I don't either. The defendant demanded that her sister Valerie make the exchange. Not as a detective, of course, but as an individual. By the way, I wanted to ask you, Mr. Edgeworth, why do you think he wanted to make the exchange up there in that mountain? If he ever got surrounded, it would be hard to escape. There's one thing a kidnapper wants to prevent, and that's police involvement. In a place like that, it would be easy to tell if he was being followed. With only one entrance to the mountain, he was ensuring his safety. That seems re reasonable. What a wickedly clever man that Mr. Falls is. Hmm, yeah, right. It was all your plan. Anyway, Valerie brought the diamond to the mountain, and... Okay... We know that's true. That was a dangerous thing to do considering you were being held hostage. Yes, but actually that saved my life. What do you mean? You see, Mr. Falls was holding a knife in his right hand. Somehow I just knew he was going to use it. I knew he was going to use that knife to kill me. That's why my sister shot him. It was to save me. Okay. I'd like to hear more about what happened right at that moment. Well, when Mr. Falls was shot in the right arm, he let go of me. I was dazed. I turned to try and run away, but Mr. Falls tried to grab me as well. As I ran past, he and I locked eyes for a second, and he gave me a large, bloodthirsty grin. I'm trying to imagine him having a bloodthirsty grin. Bloodthirsty grin? Ooh! And in the next instant... Oh, I was hoping we'd get the sound effect. The sploosh. I advise the court to remember that the river is 18 feet deep and incredibly swift. I was a strong swimmer, but I was knocked out. When I came to, I had been carried away by the river to a strange place. I'll never forget that day. The crumbling bridge, nowhere to run, and just one little shove from behind. That was it. Before my sister could catch me, I fell into the river. And that's why you hid your identity? Yes, I only told my sister. Valerie Hawthorne, eh? Yes, she's the only one who knew about me. Meanwhile, legally, this witness has been deceased for five years. I... I didn't even ever want something like that to happen to me again. Okay. Last statement here. And that new identity was Melissa Foster, right? Yes, my sister helped me get the official paperwork taken care of. That makes sense. Without an insider's help, doing all the paperwork would have been impossible. She was the only person left in the world I could count on. And you... You think I c c killed her? There's no way I could. It's a moment of truth for this witness, too. Once the truth about this stage kidnapping comes out, everyone in the court will know how much of a Jezebel she really is. I've just got to prove that kidnapping was a hoax. Okay, so we got to prove that kidnapping was a hoax. Um, I'm trying to think about what it is. That definitively proves that. I mean, none of these things, like all these things for the most part, other than the diamond, have to do with the current crime. Um, I'm trying to see if there's anything here that's particularly um, useful, but I don't think there is. Um. I don't know. I'm gonna have to look this one up. I don't really know. Unless, wait a minute, maybe under profiles. Let me take a look at that. Uh, oh man. Yeah, nothing here was particularly decisive. Yeah, I'm gonna have to look this up. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, we were supposed to present the bridge, okay. 
So, apparently... Oh, I get it. When, they, when she's talking about shoving... Okay. I was thinking that it was off the side, but... I think what we're supposed to figure out here is that... She's saying shoving from behind, meaning that she would have fallen under, un, into the rock here. So that actually was important in the end. Okay. Let's uh, present this. There we go. You say that Mr. Falls pushed you into the Eagle River. However, that's hard to believe. But it's true. I felt a push on my back. I'm certain of it. It was Mr. Falls. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't queer enough. I shouldn't have said that's hard to believe. I should have said that's impossible. Impossible? I asked that the court recall the condition of Dusky Bridge now and five years ago. That bridge hasn't changed one bit in these last five years. If someone had pushed you from behind as you cl have claimed, instead of being carried away by the river, you would have been smashed by the bedrock below. A most certain death. Do you understand now, Dahlia Hawthorne? The very notion that my client push you from behind is impossible. Ah! Your Honor, this event occurred five years ago. Why, for all we know, the water level in the river may have been higher back then. I don't think so, Edgeworth. But it's 40 feet from the bridge to the river. A small change in the water level wouldn't have made a difference. Ugh! You're right! If the events occurred just as the witness has testified, then the defendant could have pushed the witness into the river. Young lady, what is the meaning of this? Uh, I, 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 er, you see, I... Just a moment, Your Honor. It's true that the witness testified that the defendant pushed her into the river. However, she never stated that she fell from the back end of the bridge. What, what do you mean? After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. Yeah, that's what I thought she was saying initially. That's why I got confused. If that's true, she would have fallen into the river. Well, Miss Hawthorne, is Mr. Edgeworth's explanation correct? Now that you mention it, I do remember now. When I fell off the bridge, my skirt got caught on one of the bridge's side wires. You can't be serious. You just suddenly remembered that? Order! Order in the court! It seems Miss Faye's assault has finally reached its conclusion. Not now, Mia. This is no time to retreat. Unfortunately for you, this is just the start of Miss Faye's assault. What? I believe your reasoning went something like this, Mr. Edgeworth. After being shot in the arm, it's plausible that Mr. Falls panicked. Therefore, he could have unwittingly pushed her off the side of the bridge. However, once again, I'm forced to say that's impossible. Ridiculous. What's so impossible about it? Because your flawed logic contradicts the court record. Uh... I have to believe that it's, like, the bridge map again, but I'm not really sure why that would be the case. Because all the other things have to do with the current crime other than the diamond, right? I wish you could see, like, a log of all the stuff that's been said, just so you could go back and look. But sadly, you can't. Um... Unless we're trying to... I'm wondering if maybe this is the piece of evidence, because the bridge is, like, as high, like, the wires are as high as, like, their shoulders. So it would have been, like, impossible for her to be pushed off. That might be the, the thing. Let's see what it is. Yeah, that is the, the right answer. Your Honor, now all the answers are right here in this photo. 
take a look at the wires supporting both sides of the bridge. They extend up to about five feet off the ground. It would be impossible to push someone off from there. No! But let's remember the size and strength of the defendants. Wires like this wouldn't be a problem for him. He could have easily picked up a 14-year-old girl and thrown her over. Yeah, but that's not what uh, is being claimed here. So young and already so forgetful, Mr. Edgeworth. Mr. False had been shot in the right arm. Ah! And more importantly, Valerie Hawthorne had her gun trained on him at point-blank range. Ugh. So, Mr. Falls throwing the witness off the bridge? That is clearly impossible. Gwah! Order! Order! What is the meaning of this? Dahlia Hawthorne, you jumped into the Eagle River intentionally. What? What is this? Also, that sounded like the Furio Tigre roaring noise. Indeed, what do you mean by such a ridiculous remark? Yes, it's ridiculous. My sister was there to help me. She had her gun and handcuffs. She could have saved me. Jumping into a raging river like that, that would have been suicide. Perhaps, but still, that's exactly what you did. You were probably confident that you could handle the swift current. But even more so, the witness had a much more compelling reason for jumping into the river. Oh, then what was it? What was so important that she'd want to jump into the river? The witness is still alive. This fact alone explains everything. This is why she risked her life by jumping into the rapids of the Eagle River. Okay, I think it's the diamond in this case, but I'm gonna double check. Let's see... Yes, it is. Five years ago, something else disappeared along with Dahlia that day. The item that Valerie brought up the mountain with her. The two million dollar diamond. Ah! No, it can't be! Yes, Dahlia had it all planned from the beginning. The two million dollars, she was going to keep it all for herself. She forced Mr. Falls to help her fake the kidnapping. At the last minute, she betrayed him and threw herself into the river with the ransom tucked away safely in her backpack. Why, that's... that's simply ridiculous. Also, hang on a second. I'm... Order! 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 Your Honor, five years ago, the witness was only 14 years old. So, if she did do that, then... I can only imagine that the conversation between her and Valerie when she got out of the river would have been really awkward, right? I mean, yeah, so we know that they're they're betraying Terry. Like, that's been kind of implied the whole time here. But if she's planning to keep everything for herself, wouldn't Valerie have something to say about that? Do you really think a 14-year-old is capable of such a demonic plan? This woman is a demon. And there was one more person who helped make a demon out of her. Her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. You mean the victim was involved in the kidnapping plot as well? But she was a detective then. You're saying she participated in her sister's kidnapping? Precisely. I'm sure that it weighed heavily on her conscience for the past five years. This is the sole reason behind the victim's murder. What do you mean by that? On the day of the murder, after receiving a phone call from Mr. Falls, Valerie called her sister Dahlia, and then she told her what she was planning to do planning to do. She was going to tell the whole truth, as she wrote in her notes. Ooh, even Edgeworth recognizes it now. That is what sealed Valerie Hawthorne's fate. That is when you hatched your demonic plan to kill two birds with one stone. A plan that would ensure neither of your accomplices to the kidnapping would talk. And that is why you killed your sister, Valerie Hawthorne. <laughs> Who is that? Laughing at a time like this? Forgive me, it's just hilarious. 
Witness? Is that you? You amuse me, woman, Miss Mia Fey. You can certainly weave an exciting tale. Naturally, you have the evidence to back it up, don't you? Evidence? Evidence that I planned the kidnapping, of course. That at 14, I plotted it with Mr. Falls and my sister. Well, I... And one more thing. What happened to the $2 million diamond? If you can't provide evidence to at least show that... Hmm, well, Miss Fay? I... I don't know. What a joke. You, Miss Fay. Are you stupid or something? How can I prove a fake kidnapping that happened five years ago? I don't even have decisive proof of Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Well, it seems that we've come to the end. To be honest, the witness's behavior does raise certain suspicions. However, I'm forced to reject the assertions made by the defense. Oh boy. Of course you are. Is this it? Is it really over? That girl has made a fool of me, and there's nothing I can do about it. Ha! Without evidence, the trial is over? Who decided that? Mr. Armando! Come on now, kitten. Haven't you figured out that you can make your own rules? Wait a minute, this is the intro music to the second game. The, uh... The court beginning music. For example, even if there's no evidence, there's still testimony. Testimony? On the day in question, Dolly Hawthorne murdered her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. She hid her body in the trunk of Mr. Falls' stolen car, and then went to meet with him. Disguised as her sister, Valerie Hawthorne. That's what you think, right? Yes, that's right. In that case, there's only one answer, right? There is only one person left who can testify about Valerie Hawthorne's murder. Since there's no proof, there's only one thing left to do. Who is the one person who can testify to that demon woman's crimes? Well, the only person left is... Terry. Take that! Your Honor, the defense wishes to call a new witness. A new witness? Yes, we would like to hear the testimony of Terry Falls. The defendant? There's only one person that can shed any further light on the situation. Only one person that knows what Dahlia's role in the kidnapping was. Only one person that can say whether the person in the photo is Valerie Hawthorne, or whether it was in fact her younger sister Dahlia disguised as her. There's only one person who can solve this riddle once and for all. And that person is... Terry Falls. Well, Mr. Stratchworth, what is your take on this? Hmm. Why not? The prosecution has no objection. Very well. Bailiff, bring the defendant to the witness stand. This is my last chance, Mr. Falls. My last chance to establish Dahlia's guilt. You're all I have left. Defendant, you've heard everything that's been said up to this point, yes? Uh, um, I don't believe it. No way. So I still find it hard to believe that you wouldn't recognize Dahlia. Dahlia died five years ago. Valerie betrayed me. Mr. Falls, I don't know what she said to you five years ago, but one thing is clear. Dahlia is very much alive, and you were used for two million dollars. That's not... True. Mr. Falls, there's only one question I want the answer to. Two days ago on Dusky Bridge, who did you meet? Was it Valerie Hawthorne, or was it Dahlia Hawthorne? Dahlia, Dahlia, did you betray me? Five years ago she promised, she promised never ever betray each other. Terry, Dahlia, it's true. You are alive! You don't trust me anymore? That makes me sad. Tell the truth. The real truth. I... I believed in you. I shouldn't need to say it. You should already know. But... 
there is one thing that I will say. My life is in your hands right now, Terry. Dahlia. I will allow Mr. Falls to testify once and once only. Well then, Mr. Falls, yours will be the final testimony in this trial. Witness! Gah! Eek! I'm sorry. I apologize. Wah! 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 Water! Please, water! Hmm? Can't talk. Need water. Ha. Oh well, I guess it'll have to be my coffee instead. At least it'll match the way he's probably feeling right now. Darker and bitterer than hell itself. That's a f pretty familiar description. Wah! Who Terry Falls saw. That day, 4 p.m., I stopped the car. I was in front of Bridge. She wasn't there, so I waited on Bridge. I watched my car from Bridge. I never put no body in that car. Finally, one woman came. She stood in front of me. We talked, then she left. That was... That was Valerie. Not my Dahlia. Mr. Falls, you're covering for her. Do you think she would do the same for you? That's enough, Miss Faye. His last statement was a fitting way to end the final testimony of the trial. Well then, Miss Faye, please proceed with your cross-examination. Is this how you want it to end, Mr. Falls? Another guilty verdict to go along with your death sentence? There's only one person who can stop it. You, kitten. I think. Alright. I don't know if we really have evidence here other than the scarf thing. Uh, let's just take a look here. Um, I'm gonna press this. This seems like a rather interesting statement. What did you talk to her about anyway? Mr. Falls. Valerie told the truth about the kidnapping five years ago. She said someone needed to take the blame for it. That was all I could think to do. She said that. That's why she lied. Got me the death penalty. And were you satisfied with that answer, witness? No, you died. It was my fault. But I don't really remember. Maybe I did. Maybe I did push her in. It don't matter no more. Either way, my Dahlia, my sweet teen angel, dead. But you just saw that she isn't dead. After Valerie talked to me on the bridge, nothing left to live for. Hmm. I feel like we've already used the evidence about the scarf. Um, I'm just going to press everything and see what we get here. How could you be so sure? It was raining at the time, and sunset that day was at 5 o'clock. It would have already been pretty dark on that mountain at 4.30. Please, Mr. Falls, this is your last chance. You've already taken the fall once for something you didn't do. That woman. It wasn't Dahlia. Stop right there. What more needs to be said? Hmm. If it means the death penalty, even if it means taking the blame for murder... You'll still do whatever is necessary to protect her, won't you, Mr. Falls? I know it's obvious, but he's clearly lying. He's been cursed by Dahlia Hawthorne. He'll probably go to his grave still believing in her. Mr. F Mr. Falls, even if you can show he's lying, the poor guy will still be cursed. He'll still have to point out the contradiction anyway. That's the curse of being a defense lawyer, I guess. Um, I guess I'll just keep going here for now. According to the note, the meeting was supposed to take place at 4.30. You certainly arrived early, didn't you? It was raining, already dark, too. You waited on the bridge for 30 minutes? Mr. Falls, Eagle Mountain, that spot. Strong, strong memories. Why did he just clam up? Could it be he's hiding something here? I think he is. 
you were quite early, so you waited on the bridge, correct? Yeah, I like waiting. I'm used to it. I'm sure he is. Zebra Boy waited five years to ask a single question. To find out why a woman betrayed him. To him, 30 minutes must have been like a blink of the eye. You were watching the car? That bridge, other side is broken. Nobody can come from there. So I was watching car. Huh, what else were we expecting him to do? I suppose that's the obvious thing to do, but something's bothering me. I'm getting that feeling. A contradiction? I wonder what's on the other side of the broken bridge anyway. No one lives there. There's a small shrine up on the mountain, but that's it. A shrine, huh? Anyway, nobody came. No car, nothing. Mr. Falls, think carefully now. Are you certain that it was Valerie Hawthorne? Uh, uh, uh. I never lie. It's the truth. It was Valerie. I remembered her face. Wait a minute. If you had remembered her face, then why did you make her wear a scarf as identification? Good question. Uh, sorry. I told a little lie. But the woman I met, she was different from the woman standing here now. She was different. It was Valerie. I mean, she would definitely look different with different colored hair, at least. Okay, so that's all the stuff we can press. Um, so the contradiction... This is... Interesting. Um, Mia mentions a possible contradiction on this statement, right? I really hope... No. That, that wouldn't be the case, would it? Are they trying to suggest that Dahlia has such a hold on him that she that he actively participated in putting the body in the car? Okay, I don't actually know what the answer here is. Oh! Hang on. Oh, right. So she's standing there looking back, and he's standing the other way. So that, that is a contradiction. Okay. There we go. So when you got to the bridge, no one had arrived, huh? So you waited on the bridge? You're sure of that? Yeah, I'm sure. You're sure, huh? Well, then I'm sure too, Mr. Falls. I'm sure that you're lying. Huh? Oh, why? And the game froze again. Okay, this is a little concerning. There we go. Wah, wah, wah! Oh, I would love to hear your rationale on this, Miss Faye. You want to know who arrived at the bridge first? Just look at this photo. It's perfectly queer. Obviously, the person that came first would be the one at the end of the bridge, right? But that's the victim at the end of the bridge. Precisely my point. In other words, Mr. Falls, you must have arrived at the bridge after she did. Um, Mr. Falls, please don't get so worked up. We just want the truth. I got there around 4 o'clock. That's true. I... I had somewhere to go. A special place. Did you go to this special place before you went to the bridge? Yeah, it's an old temple about 15 minutes from the bridge. Five years ago, me and Dahlia, we promised each other. We swore we wouldn't betray each other. She brought a memento to represent our love. A memento? Five years ago, I hid it under a base of tree there. It's a special memory for me. This is it. This is what I went to get. That looks awfully familiar. This little bottle on a necklace is your memento? It's quite charming, but it looks empty. Your Honor, you heard what my client said. He arrived at the scene at 4 o'clock, but he then left his car unattended and walked away. 
He was gone for approximately 30 minutes. Er. With that much time, Dahlia Hawthorne could have easily hidden the body in the trunk of his car. No! Indeed, there certainly was enough time for it. I've still got a chance. Mr. Falls, there's no mistaking it. Er. Huh? Mr. Falls? That's enough. Please. Oh my. Witness! I promised her five years ago if it ever happens that we can't trust each other no more. Then we're supposed to drink bottle. Uh. No! Stop the trial! Your Honor, we need a recess. Ah, I, I was stupid. Couldn't keep promise. So I did it. I drank this. No! We are so close. Just a little more. I was going to prove your innocence. No, don't want that. Don't trust self. Maybe kill again. Kill sweet Dahlia again. But you didn't do that, dude. Mr. Falls? Mr. Ar Armando. Thanks for the coffee. Mr. Falls! And so my first trial ended. Suddenly, and tragically. It ended with no winners. Only losers. I ended up with a wound that cut so deep into my soul, I thought it'd never heal. I'm sure it was the same for the young prosecutor as well. But one person, the true criminal, Dahlia Hawthorne, she left the courtroom with a secret smile on her demonically sweet face. Unforgivable, that witch. Mr. Armando, we were so close to the truth. It was right there in front of us. You were just a little too soft, kitten. It's my fault. It's all my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself. Don't cry, kitten. You're going to make my coffee all salty. I knew it. I knew I wasn't cut out for this. Mia. Don't you get it? You can't cry yet. Ooh! The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. Mr. Armando? Man, that's pretty hardcore, dude. No matter how tough the case, no matter how bitter the memories, they always fade over time, then you file them away and eventually forget them. One year later, in this very same courthouse, I myself got wrapped up in that case. Ah, uh, yes. We, have, we are familiar with that case. Also, what is Phoenix doing? Is he in a hospital bed? What's he doing there? Only after that did Dahlia Hawthorne get put on trial for her crimes. The verdict that was ultimately handed down to her was... Guilty, of course. Naturally, when the verdict was read, she had a perfect angelic smile on her face. It was finally all over. At least, that's what I thought at the time. Unfortunately, I couldn't have been more wrong. 
It's been five years, but now something has happened that's made me remember all this. Oh? The end. Well, everybody, it's all come down to this. Next time, we are going to take on the final case of the Ace Attorney Trilogy. A brand new episode has been added. Bridge to the Turnabout. So next time, we will take on the climactic conclusion of this series of games. And I hope you're looking forward to it. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, this was a really interesting case to play. And I'm looking forward to finishing the game in the next set of videos here. So I hope you'll join me for that. Until then, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.